Yeah, let's go over a flamethrower build. This is one of those builds you can make right out the gate. Uh, transition to the synth runes later, but start building into it immediately. Um, let's go over the link runes. It's got a pretty simple setup here. So you got the Shadow Justice synth rune. So let's go over the stuff you can get easy. Shadow Provocation, always good in most builds, especially if you're self-casting. Movement skills. We've got Disturb, attached to your Penetrating Slash and Roll. Pretty good setup, one of my favorite. And then you got Electric Area here. This is to get some damage amp up. Most likely only yellow packs and bosses ever require this. And then you got the Seal of Pain here. Seal of Defense. Got your uh, Weaken Element Totem, one of the best. These are the kind of, this is kind of the basic setup you'd have for most of these skills here. And then we got your flamethrower. So he's using damage acceleration, dot, element damage amplification with origin, harmony, mana storm, and area of effect. Looks like area of effect is still yellow. So the legendary effect, and it doesn't look like he's gonna be awakening it anytime soon then. Damage acceleration is verity. As for the flamethrower itself, that's been awakened to Verity as well. Changes the interaction with it. Take a look at the rune stones, even though we got a, yeah, 9.1% damage amp, that's amazing. Cooldown recovery. Um, looks like just a plus one, just getting a plus one there. Let's go over his, his items real quick. The way you're gonna gear. Fire damage, damage against debuffed enemies. Dot amplification. Dot amplification, attack and spell damage, fire damage. Oh, this is the new Karma helmet, very cool. As I said, he goes for full tank. Lights portrait as well. HP, elemental damage. Mm, look at that HP roll, very nice. More HP, I didn't even notice his boots had that, that's very nice. Attack enhanced skill, you'll see this is most of the builds. So. A lot of amp. Looking for elemental damage amp, dot amp. In any case, mana potion cooldown recovery speed. There you go. Castor's Blessing. Elemental damage amp, or damage. Some HP dot, dot, so mainly dot elemental damage. Sephdar, mental stimulations of the game here. Capri, fire pen. Um, looks like he's going spigot in the end too, but we're still leveling this. So we'll focus more on what he's doing here. Here's your zodiac. When I try to go over the Zodiacs for you guys, I just kind of try to go over the way you level instead of uh, all in the same area. As you see, still going for that HP. 
He is quite tanky, and you know, if you can't live through the content, then you're not doing any damage. And he, he definitely, if you look at the build here, he can amp his damage up whenever he feels like it. But in the meantime, why not just be more tanky when we're doing all this raid content in our guild? Also, the kind of build it is. When you make a channeling build, you do have to be able to stand through as much damage as possible if you want to get that maximum damage in. So building a little bit more tanky than other classes is definitely a good plus. Same concept with my um, minion build. If you're able to keep your minions alive long enough, if you're able to keep yourself alive long enough, the damage ramps up with a lot of channeling abilities. So ramping up that damage and losing it often isn't a good thing. <clears throat> Not sure about over here. Most people get excited about spec over here. He must have decided to go more for the tank stuff. So let's check out the specialization. As I said, just a basic flamethrower build for people to see a um, nice starter build you can make that can lead into endgame and uh, is also extremely powerful uh, in raid content and being able to do pretty much all the, all the maps as well. <clears throat> 